Hey everybody, uh, Mrs. Marshall here, and I wanted to show you uh, a math uh, I, uh, derivation, and it's just like the title says. I think it's the clearest, easiest proof that um, that that this sum over here is equal to the thing. The thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right. That one plus one over two squared plus one over three squared plus one over four squared. And you add all that up, you get pi squared over 6. Okay, now what we're going to do is, is we're going to take two integrals we know that are equal to pi over 2, is this one right here. The integral from 0 to infinity with respect to x of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and just do that again, but with a different dummy variable. And see, we call it x here, and we're going to call it y over on the right. And so if you multiply those with the same value, you multiply them together, you get pi squared uh, pi over 2 times pi over 2 and you get pi squared over 4 okay so let's just do that and ke and so you're gonna have a double integral when you multiply those together and you're gonna have the uh, with dx and times dy and then we're gonna move that to polar coordinates transform to polar coordinates so at x equal rho times cosine of theta y is equal rho times sine of theta so once again, we have the same thing on the left side. Pi squared over four is equal to integral from zero to infinity. Uh, and then the integral from zero to pi over two, that's gonna be for the angle, or theta. Um, and once you multiply that out, you get one plus rho squared plus rho to the fourth, sine squared times cosine squared. Um, and so we can integrate with respect to rho, okay? And then we'll make rho equal to r squared. So I kind of did two things in one step there. And you can look that integral up in any book on um, you know, your integral tables. You can, I mean, uh, yeah, any any good good set of integral tables like uh, DeHaan's or, or um, Gradstein. Gradstein Rizik. Um, <clears throat> so after you make rho squared equal to r, you're going to get, uh, you're going to reduce the degree of the polynomial in the in the denominator, and uh, we're going to flip one of the, or no, this integral has a negative value, so you have a negative sign out front, and then you get a big, um, sort of a big bunch of trigonometric functions and uh, the log, that should be ln log the log of the tangent squared. Um, okay, so we still have the negative sign out front. We're gonna simplify. Um, let's use my finger to see this sine times cosine. That's equal to that's equal to this up here. So those are gonna cancel. And then you're just gonna have another half out front. It's, it's two sine theta, cosine theta is equal to the sine of two theta. If you remember your trigonometric identities and so that leaves the cosine uh, of 2 theta in, in the denominator so now you make x equal to the tangent right so that's just going to be the log of x squared and then by doing that you have to take the derivative and, and find out what uh, the differential is going to be and then what cosine of 2 theta is going to be in this tangent like variable world so it ends up with this integral right here uh, the log of x over 1 minus x squared integral from 0 to infinity negative and of course um, we know from uh, from the rules of logarithm that um, integral of 1 to infinity is equal to the log from 0 to 1 the integral from 0 to 1 same thing um, so that gives us another two so that du we can double so we have double so that, so that four becomes eight in the denominator on the on the left hand side because we have two of what we need so we just brought it out here and divided by um, so we have the integral from zero to one because they have the same thing we have two of what we need so we just made it this one the easy one zero to one okay and so let's find that, that integral. 
almost a one page proof. It kind of is, but um, so we used uh, integration by parts, you know, good old meat and potatoes way to do evaluate this integral here. And if you evaluate this at one and the zero and then subtract, uh, you get negative one over uh, n plus one quantity squared. Um, and so that took care of one of our integrals. No, that, that's what we need to evaluate this. Yeah, this is this is what we need to evaluate this. Um, so that shows you where the one over the square term comes from, from right here. And so you just go ahead and do that in each of these cases and you're gonna get, uh, and just ignore this, this thing at the top, this derivation at the top, just we're starting from here. And so we, we expand the denominator at as an infinite series, right? And then we just do each of these integrals. And in each case, they're gonna give you this. The, the power of this squared in the denominator. So that's what happens. Um, but we're just, it just gave us the even number, I mean the odd numbers, right? So we're gonna to have to um, come, come up with another way to get what we wanted because that we wanted all the whole numbers not just the odd numbers so so you can do this simple little um, we're looking for this and here's what we have um, so it, it ends up being pi squared over six uh, when you because s is um, like we said here, s is equal to the sum of all the whole numbers squared one over. And so s, that's what we, when we solved the simple algebra here, we, we, we use this, the fact that we had pi squared over eight was equal to just the odd numbers in the denominator squared. We use this fact right through here and solve for all numbers, all whole numbers in the denominator squared added up. And you get pi squared over six, two pages. Now, if you were to, the standard derivation of this goes either you use um, you use complex variable analysis, um, and you um, you evaluate use your residue theory, Cauchy's resi residue theorem, and evaluate that, or or you you use Euler's um, expand uh, sine over x as an infinite product and 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 then you know the fact that if if, um, if you add up all of the uh, roots it's equal to the the linear term the coefficient of the linear term if you add up all the roots to a uh, polynomial and so but that's really tough because you have to know um, prove that that that, that works on an infinite if when you have an infinite number of roots because the sine <coughs> sine function has an infinite number of roots, so this is easier. This proof, um, it's it's more clearly uh, clear cut because you're just evaluating a double integral. Pr pretty sort of nasty one at times, but a, a fairly straightforward double integral. Um, so I mean, you can try this um, this technique and and, and get some. Uh, crazier identities if you, if you just um, if you know what your integral is equal to you can change you know do the same thing and multiply them together and then switch to polar coordinates and um, get some other neat stuff going uh, so but, um, that's the end of the proof and um, let me know what you think this uh, I think it's pretty straightforward so have a good one bye